this video we're going to upgrade the RAM and the SSD in this MSI Trident 3. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we've got this MSI Trident 3 that we're going to upgrade. A couple months back I had one of these that was a like a 7th gen i5 and we did some upgrades on it, we fixed it. Uh, just happened to stumble upon this one which is a 10th gen i5 and it's got a, a GTX 1650 graphics card in here and only 8 gigs of RAM and I think the way that it's performing right now, the way that it boots up so slow I'm pretty sure there's just a one terabyte uh, SATA hard drive installed in here. So we're going to take this thing apart. We're going to slap in 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. We're going to put one terabyte SSD in there, an NVMe drive. So we're going to have to take this thing all the way apart. The RAM is easy to get to, but the hard drive's on the bottom. So I'll go step by step and show you how to take this thing apart and how to get all the upgrades in there. So our first step is to get the top lid off. So we're going to turn this thing around and I'll show you what we need to do. So if we're looking at the back side, this left panel here is the first thing that needs to come off. So if you look real close, right here, there's just a little indention, a little tiny place to put your fingernail right there. So we're just gonna kind of pop that like that, and it's going to just nice and gently snap off, and that's gonna reveal the side here. Right now we're just going to start with these two top screws here. So let me go ahead and take those out. And once you have these two screws here, I think this thing should just slide this way. So it just slides just a, a little bit, about half an inch or so, and then this lid comes right off. Now in this model there is no uh, light uh, built in here, an LED light. On previous models I've found that there was a light that was plugged into the motherboard. So when you take that off, if uh, you're not sure exactly which model you have, go ahead and lift it up slowly, see if you've got a cable connected, and if you do, you can disconnect that cable first before you rip it out accidentally. So the top is off, that exposes all the insides here. So let's take a quick little tour. This is obviously the G GPU. This is the fan that covers up the processor. And then we've got our two RAM slots here. So currently I've got one stick of eight I'm going to put two sticks of eight in there, and I just bought a, uh, a complete kit just to uh, make it easy. You don't have to worry about latency and timings and stuff, and it's really not that much more expensive right now than a single chip. So we're going to be using DDR4 2666 or 2667 megahertz, however it's listed. I've seen it listed both, and uh, we're going to do that. Now to get to the hard drive, you, obviously you can't see the hard drive. It's actually underneath here, so we'll go through the steps to take that apart and get access to that. And there's a couple options on the SSD and hard drive that we can do, so we'll talk about that once we get that exposed. But for right now, let's go ahead and swap out this RAM. So let me turn this around so you can get a better view. And with these two slots here, all you got to do is take, to remove the old ones, you're just going to take those ears and pull them apart. That's going to lift up a little bit. We're going to grab that by the sides and we're done with that. So we're going to put that to the side and to get ready to put both of them back in, we'll go ahead and open up the ears on the other slot that wasn't being used. Now if you look down in here, you'll see that there is an offset notch and that's going to match the offset of this RAM. So you're just going to make sure that that's on the correct side. In this case, I'm looking at it on the left side and we're just going to take that RAM place it in the slot and I let it sit all the way down there and then I use my two thumbs I'm just going to push down on the left and then push down on the right right after each other so it's just going to be a snap snap and they happen to go down both at the same time so we'll do the same thing with the second chip line it up in the slot and then snap it down now at this point I usually take and run my finger across the two of them just to make sure that they're both sitting parallel like that and one isn't kind of skewed like that. Um, that just gives me a, a peace of mind that I did get them all the way down. Once we boot this thing up, if it doesn't recognize all 16 gigs, we just pop the lid again, check to make sure that they're fully seated, but I think they were good to go right now. Alright, so now that the RAM is done, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the hard drives. So to get underneath there, 
first thing we're going to do is take off a couple screws up here along the top. So I did turn this around. GPU is on your left now. So I got a screw here and a screw here. And in previous models, there was a screw. If you look right there, there's a little hole through the motherboard. There was a screw down in there that I had to remove. This one wasn't there, so I don't know if they changed that on this model or if someone has already been in here. So we're just going to take these two screws off the top. And basically what has to happen is this part right here has to slide outward. And to get that to happen also, I believe we're going to have to take these two screws off this left side. So the bottom part of the left side, we did these top ones before to get the top lid off. So let me remove those. All right. Now once we're ready, we got all the screws off. Basically, like I said, this is going to slide this way. And you can see now that we got these screws out, that it is going to move a little bit. We can get it past these screws, but it's just a matter of kind of wiggling it and getting it to slide out. And that's it. So once we do this, it's gonna move back a little bit, just unlocking itself. Before we take it completely off, there is a cable here. I believe that is for light. That is coming down to the motherboard here. So you've got a couple of options. One is we just rotate this thing around like this and not even mess with that cable. The other is we just take it and we disconnect it. And it's pretty easy, just don't pull by the wires. You know, try to grab it by the clip and just pull it up. And just, we're gonna remember to plug that back in. So with that unplugged, you can just go ahead and take this full bottom shelf here and put it to the side. Now we're ready to flip this thing over and take a look at the bottom. So right here, this is where we've got the existing hard drive. So it is a couple screws here that take this case off and you can see the SATA connector here. So we do have probably a spinning drive underneath there. We could replace that with a three and a half or two and a half inch SSD and that would be one way to go. The other thing is we've got an NVMe slot right here and you can see the, the mounting hole there. And this, according to the specs, will take either a NVMe or a SATA SSD. And I've got an NVMe drive that we're gonna put in there so I guess the decision is, do we keep this in here and use it as a data drive? And we can just reformat it, make sure we put Windows on here, and then just reformat this one and have that as like a D drive? Or do we just take it out completely? And honestly, I don't have any use for another drive, another laptop drive. So I'm just going to leave it in there, and we're going to reinstall Windows on here. And then I'll just go in here and format that, clean it all the, way, all the way off, and we can store some games on there. So let's go ahead and get this SSD drive ready to install. All right, to install this drive, we're first going to take out this little screw first, this little mounting screw. And if you've watched any of my laptop videos or MacBook videos, you'll know I love this Strabido toolkit here. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. Love it for two reasons. One, it's always got the right size bit. In this case, I'm using a Phillips 1. A Phillips 0 would also work, but Phillips 1 works perfect for this screw. And the other reason is it's magnetic, so... Once we get this thing out, I have no fear of dropping it. It picks it up every time. So with that being done, we're going to take this NVMe drive. And originally I was going to use one with a heat sink, but the heat sink was a little bit too tall. So I'm not going to worry about that. So I've got a TimeTech one terabyte NVMe drive. And I've used a lot of TimeTech products. Uh, love them. They've always worked well for me. So we're just going to take and install Right in here, you can see there's a little notch on the card, and there's a notch on the socket here. We're just going to slide it in, and I always give it a little wiggle just to make sure it's all the way in. And then once we set it down, this mounting screw should match this little uh, half moon shape mounting area should match there. And then we can take the same screw with our trusty screwdriver that's magnetic and send that right back down in there. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So now we can start to put this thing back together, flip it over, and we'll boot it up and see if the BIOS finds everything. All right, so I flipped this back over, put it on top of the bottom uh, case here, and just make sure you have this cable out of the way, not jammed up underneath the, the board. And once we get that out of the way, we can kind of slide this back, and it's going to kind of mate back together. 
these two mounting screws will line up, the two down here will line up, and then we'll need to plug this in. So let me put a couple screws in there and plug that in, and I'll be right back. All right, so I got the four screws back in, and I plugged in that wire. Now, I will admit the wire would have been a little bit easier to plug in while it was still moved away from the motherboard, but I was able to get it in there. So once we got that done, we can put the uh, top lid on. So I'm gonna grab the top lid, and we're going to remember that this screen goes over the GPU. I'm just gonna place it on top. I'm just gonna snap it in place. I'm not gonna worry about putting the other two screws and snapping the plastic on yet, because I wanna go ahead and boot this thing up and test it all out, make sure everything's good to go. So let me hook it up to a monitor and keyboard and mouse, and we'll see what we can find in BIOS. All right, so I got it hooked up to mouse and keyboard and this uh, handy dandy 18 and a half inch portable monitor I just reviewed on the channel recently. And uh, it just makes it easy to, to hook something up and uh, get it out of the way real quick. So we're gonna boot this thing up and I never remember what keys to push. So I'm just gonna hit F2 and delete. And one of those might have worked because here we are into the MSI BIOS. So let's look real quick. We got the DDR speed 2666, and it is showing over here 16 gigs of installed memory. So that's good. There's the core i5-10400F. And let's go ahead and go out of this easy mode here and look at storage. And on the SATA port, it's still seeing that one terabyte SATA drive, and then here's the M.2 port showing the time tech MS101 terabyte SSD. So everything that we put in there is recognized. So the next step I'm going to do is grab a Windows 10 boot disk, and I'm going to put Windows 10 on that new drive there, and we'll boot it up and get all the drivers on there. All right, so I got Windows all installed and all the updates done, the drivers uploaded, all that good stuff. And I always like to finish off with running some type of benchmark. This is just the Heaven benchmark. It's a free one you can download. And I like to just run this to check all the temperatures and see what the frame rates are, make sure everything hardware-wise looks like it's running right. And so far it looks like it's running great. This is a, a GTX 1650 Super, so a little bit better than the 1650 I thought it was. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be a, a good little gaming machine. It's unique in the fact that it looks like a console. It does have a stand that will let you stand it upright. Um, but I think it looks kind of neat like this. But we've got a fresh one terabyte drive in there. We've got 16 gigs of RAM. It's running great. So I think this one is done. So I'll leave links down in the description below of some RAM and some hard drives that are equivalent to this or compatible with this in case you want to upgrade your Trident 3. And if you do, let us know down below in the comments how it goes. Of course, if you have any questions along the way, go ahead and drop those down there. I'll be happy to answer anything I can. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, I appreciate a big thumbs up. I appreciate that. But I think that's going to do it for this one. I thank you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.